Born in Calcutta in 1936, Imrat Khan was still very young when he lost his father, Ustad Inayat Khan, who was the greatest sitar and subhar player of his time. Early training began under the guidance of his mother and maternal grandfather, Ustad Bande Hassan Khan, whose ancestry boasts a proud lineage of famous singers, and he was fortunate to receive his sitar tuition from his elder brother, the legendary Ustad Vilayat Khan, who took on the role of both father and guru. The breadth and diversity of Imrat Khan's uniquely comprehensive training enabled him to establish rapidly his reputation as one of the very finest exponents of both sitar and surbahar. Ustad Imrat Khan has widely traveled all over the world and has attended many musical conferences all over the country and abroad. It's an honor for me to be sitting here with you, to be sitting with one of the greatest exponents of the greatest sitar and surbahar gharana. And uh, so please tell us something about your gharana. Well, I, I don't know if you, you know that our gharana is linked from the court of Mughal Emperor Akbar and we are several generations, yes, nine or tenth generation in between and including our children you can increase one or two generations more because yeah. already my sons are playing and their, their little ones are also playing. But by the grace of God, uh, the ghara, the, in my gharana, this uh, surbahar and sitar has been both continued for centuries and the entire research of the sitar, what you see today on sitar and also on surbahar is, is the contribution of my gharana, of Ustad Ibdad Khan Sahib, Ustad Inayat Khan Sahib and then Ustad Vilayat Khan Sahib in a very humble way by myself and then Sahib Daat Khan and I'm not going on and on so by the grace of God.
while you practice during your riyas what are the things that you keep in mind i mean some things that you take care of we definitely keep very much in the mind when we play sitar all the beautiful bandish all the great compositions of not only my forefathers but other gharanas bandishes we have to keep them into mind to be to the movement into the rag because a rag until unless you have learned quite a number of bandish or compositions from great masters you cannot really play a rag because explore in one yes, rag and the, the bandishes are like maps yeah. and you can find the most beautiful shortcuts and you know and if you know the compositions if you have learned from your ustad beautifully bandish not only one but in the dhrupad and khayal and tarana and there are many other styles if you learn them properly then you can move around into your rag with confidence the guru shishya parampara guru shishya parampara is one of the finest cultural heritage but we have i think it's it's been all over the world in all culture but fortunately we are very very happy and i'm very very grateful that this system actually survived in india the guru shishya parampara means you have to really surrender to your master and that surrender itself uh gave how much can a teacher your your teacher can how much can the teacher teach you for our six hours but when you think of the teacher as god in your heart then the teacher teaches you even when he is or she is not even in front of you that aspect comes to the guru shishan parampara you see i although my uncle was the only survived person who knew the knowledge of subhar but he was my own uncle my younger brother of ustad in rajasthan ustad in khan was my uncle i had to go with the dakshana to my uncle and to his feet and he put the thread on my hand so you see guru shishya parampara is a very valuable aspect but it's a very hard thing to find guru at first guru must know how much the capacity of let's see how much capacity a shishya has and then so we don't really make guru shishya parampara just to everyone but we do we first try to find out the capacity of the student 
and their sincerity and then we do the nada band Thank you.